Happy Wednesday. Hump day. Middle of the week. Day before Thanksgiving, if you are in the uh, United States. So I want to take a moment to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. Even if you don't celebrate, take a moment to be thankful for all the things that you have. Sometimes it's easy to forget that we are very privileged. That are those who do not have what we have. No matter how little, it seems like we have some days. Um, so now, on to our shout out. Are you ready? Shout out time. Here's a shout out just for you. You support me, so I support you. This shout out is for our friend, Wandering Hippie. A Wandering Hippie has a fairly large channel. It says, please join me on my adventures. You never know where the day will find me. Same when we are wandering. Never know where we're going to go. I just go with the flow and see where my mind takes me. Life is an adventure, and you might find me gathering news, photography, cop watching, walking the dog, uh, don't, oh, anyway, have a good day. Okay. Tell us something interesting. All right, well, coming up on Thursday... Everybody's favorite, uh, you know, American pastime, for those of you overseas. We have what's known as Thanksgiving, kind of a, uh, a tradition every year. Uh, served with, you know, turkey, stuffing, potatoes, uh, cranberry sauce, you know, all sorts of, you know, fun vittles. And then usually at, while you're, you know, suffering from that turkey-induced coma, uh, they'll sometimes have uh, about three games of football on the TV and you know Dallas Cowboys tend to get into that a little bit but history wise is a little bit of a different spin um, like we mentioned in the last week's video about the uh, the fact that you know pilgrims came to Plymouth and uh, basically looking at religious reasons uh, the big thing that uh, started with the the first get-together at 1621 uh, you know, they had the allies from the, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, Wanapanak tribe. They did gather for an epic three-day feast to celebrate their first successful harvest. Uh, far from the entire story, uh, most of us in elementary school uh, learned about this uh, group of exiles that began establishing civilization in the New World, winning over local tribes with promises of friendship. Then the friendly Native Americans taught these new arrivals how to grow crops to sustain their Burgundy society from that day forward. Not quite. The well, real story is a lot more complicated, not to mention a lot less uh, kid-friendly. Well, the fact is that the peace brought the uh, Wanabog and the settlers together at the table wasn't as neat as tidy as we'd like to believe. There was a, a lot of bloodshed that took place both before and after that first feast. And today, many Native Americans, others, mark Thanksgiving with a solemn day of remembrance instead of celebration. Here's what really went down after the plates were cleared in Plymouth, Mass. Now, by the numbers, there was a, a pretty good cr crew that was there at that first Thanksgiving. More than 100 people showed up. Uh, about 90 Native men and 50 Englishmen got together for the feast uh, in colonial foodways. Uh, the Native people dined sitting on the ground as they did at home, and the English ate at a, ate at a table like they did at theirs. The groups uh, likely played marksmanship games and ran foot races between dining on deer, geese, and other fowl. Uh, the festivities lasted three days, since it took the Wanapog a solid two, to, two days to walk there. So yes, overnight guests were also a long-standing Thanksgiving tradition. Now, the Wanapog leader, uh, named Masatoit, first negotiated a treaty between the Plymouth settlers and the tribe in 1620, the year prior, which included an agreement that no one from either group would ever harm anyone from the other. They also agreed to leave their weapons at home when trading to further ensure peaceful commerce. For about 10 years, the Mastoet and the Pilgrims were made allies, trading English goods for Wanapuk land, access to natural resources, and other assets. But before Mastoet passed away in 1661 and his son, Wamsuta took over, tensions began to simmer again. In the years between 1630 and 1642 alone, about 25,000 European 
uh, colonizers arrived, which brought about a devastating plague, which cut the native population more than half. Now, the big thing to think about is nobody intentionally came to infect people. That's one of the arguments that I love hearing in debates is, well, you know, they brought smallpox, and they brought all these English illnesses. Yeah, people got sick back then. You know, they didn't have any natural immunity. And needless to say, there were no plastic oxygen tents at that time to stick people in when they were sick. You know, it happens. Now, Watts Moon himself died mysteriously in 1662 while visiting the Puritans to discuss the gathering unrest between the two groups. Uh, his successor, Metacomet, only fanned the flames. Now, in 1675, three natives were executed after killing a man who had served as a translator to the settlers, which only further fanned the flames of distrust between the two groups. Matacomet fe uh, feared the natives would lose more land to their new neighbors and built a coalition of various, na various native tribes to protect themselves and their resources. By the fall of 1675, the coalition members began to clash with settlers, attacking settlements in Connecticut and Massachusetts. Well, the Narragansett tribe wanted to remain neutral, but they wouldn't give up one of Tog, who had taken refuge in their encampment, or turn away, turn away women, children, and the elderly or infirm from the tribe who came to them seeking shelter from the conflict. As a result, the Puritan forces attacked the Narragansett stronghold, killing up to 600 natives and about 150 settlers in a bloody battle in its aftermath. Everybody loves good neighbors, don't they? Yay, neighbors! Well, what became known as the King Philip's War ensued, and so after they named after Metacomet's English monkier, the subsequent conflicts decimated both native tribes and the colonies. One of Tog abducted settlers, held, holding them for ransom, and the settlers pillaged and destroyed native villages. Much of the colonies were burned and looted, taking decades to fully recover. Uh, a little interesting article from the Historical Journal of Massachusetts said that the war could have claimed as many as 30% of the English population and half of the Native Americans then living in New England. It ended when Metacomet was killed, beheaded, dismembered. Hello. Uh, his remaining allies were also executed or sold into slavery in the West Indies. The colonists impaled King Philip's head on a spike and displayed it in Plymouth for 25 years as a macabre, uh, macabre, macabre effigy to the strife. Well, this wasn't the last or only conflict between native peoples and the colonizers. Other wars raged in Virginia, Connecticut, New York, and elsewhere, and the Native American population has never really recovered. For the thriving societies that were already living in what's now the United States when the Europeans arrived, the settlers' arrival wasn't the beginning of the New World, but the end of one. Uh, you know, the big thing also for that reason, Native Americans and the supporters have gathered at noon on Coles Hill in Plymouth to commemorate the National Day of Mourning on Thanksgiving Day since 1970. The participants of the National Day of Mourning honor Native ancestors and the struggles of Native peoples to survive today. It's a day of remembrance, spiritual connection, the protest against racism and oppression that the Native Americans have suffered and continue to experience today. This year, uh, spare a thought for the Native people before tucking into your turkey and remember where the history of Thanksgiving really came from. Now, one of the things I did find kind of funny when I was doing a bit of the research last week is that, you know, there, there's a big difference between settlers and explorers. Um, going both up from, you know, South America, Central America, and in, into North America, some of, the, some of these people, you know, obviously they were looking for various reasons for coming over. Um, one of the great myths was that Columbus supposedly was looking for a way to the uh, East Indies, and you know, by his calculations, they thought there was a slim chance that maybe there was a shortcut. Maybe he thought the globe was smaller. Uh, instead, he wound up uh, discovering the islands that are now known as our West Indies. Um, some of the settlers, <clears throat> it seemed, as soon as they discovered that, you know, there's actually more land over here than anybody realized, came over with two purposes in mind. One was claiming the land for 
particular, you know, political ventures. I claim this for the king of Spain. I claim this for the king of Portugal. I claim this for the king of England. Or, uh, as the Spaniards seem to have a, a head start with, was this, the hunt for gold. Um, there was a lot of places that they went looking in South America. Uh, you know, the, the, the legendary cities of gold, you know, and granted there was some gold that was found, but it wasn't in any, you know, major cities that they were expecting, you know. Some of the people think that it was mostly a, uh, an illusion. Other people think it was hid by the jungles. You know, there's a lot of different stories that work to that aspect. Um, when you came up through Central America, uh, you know, you had the Incas and other groups that, you know, lived and had smaller city-states. The big thing to look at there is that, again, you know, it really wasn't the gold as much. Uh, a lot of them were looking to build settlements and uh, expand their own empires here in the New World. Uh, and some of these people actually wound up coming up into what's now the southwestern United States, trying to expand their territories. Uh, France was kind of funny to that aspect because they claimed a great big huge chunk of the uh, land around the Mississippi and the Missouri River area and then hardly ever set foot out here. And then they made a deal with, uh, I do believe it was Thomas Jefferson that uh, made the Louisiana Purchase and it uh, wound up uh, tripling the size of the United States that way. But the big thing to look at though is that you also had people uh, that they were definitely explorers. Uh, Hudson, the guy who Hudson Bay is named after, uh, was one of the people that was looking for the uh, Northwest Passage. And uh, he had probably a really close chance at it. However, uh, his crew happened to decide that they didn't want to go sailing with him anymore. So they put him and a couple people out on a boat and then sailed off into history because they never found his uh, disobedient crew. Um, but people have been looking over there for uh, a number of years and uh, they, they, to this day I don't think there is one that's existent I mean with the global warming and uh, the ice caps melting there stands a chance that uh, eventually a Northwest Passage could exist however we do now have the uh, Panama Canal which uh, takes and cuts a lot of the, wor the uh, work out of going all the way down to the uh, Juan de Fugo down in South America or all the way up north but a lot of the sailing, you know, it goes down through the Panama Canal, so you could go to the East Coast or the West Coast of the United States. Uh, as for the Pilgrims, you know, they were one of the uh, settlers settlements that originally started on the, you know, mainland continental United States or North America at that time. Um, they had a group that tried to settle down by present-day uh, North Carolina uh, that failed miserably. There was the remote colony, as we were calling it. Uh, everybody disappeared. disappeared, and they think they kind of got sucked into another tribe. Um, there was uh, Jamestown, which uh, I did some research on it, and that actually was kind of ingenious, the way that they set it up. And uh, they actually dodged a couple bullets, because the, uh, I guess from what I was reading, Spain tried to take it over once. Um but unfortunately, they, uh, their timing didn't work out because just as they were getting ready to cause some uh, massive mischief, the English showed up with a supply ship. Whoops. And then, of course, further to the north, and, uh, you know, the pilgrims showed up off of Cape Cod. Originally, I guess they were going to try to settle further to the south, but due to the uh, strong currents and the, uh, you know, the tide, they weren't able to get any further south, so they just kind of parked offshore. Whoop, and uh, stuck here. wintered in on their ship. They never actually went on to the mainland to try to build anything because they discovered that, uh, well, New England states are kind of notorious for being cold and the ground being frozen what? in November. <laughs> no. They're cold, warm. Cold conditions and, uh, you know. And then, uh, you know, with the fact that, uh, I'm trying to remember the numbers, almost half of the pilgrims died. Uh, half of the crew of the boat perished, uh, waiting for the next uh, season to come around before they could go back and uh, try to grab more crew. But, you know, for all the people that came over here, you know, seizing land, 
killing uh, Native Americans and looking for gold, you look at the Pilgrims group and they were probably the least hostile at the start. But, like everybody else seems to do, is, you know, after, you know, two or three years of surviving and uh, trying to expand the land, that eventually uh, things got the better of them and people started getting better. But, you know, Thursday, you know, probably going to be celebrating with uh, Grandma and Grandpa and a couple relatives from down to Denver. And, uh, but enjoy some turkey, play some games. <laughs> Probably do some cards against humanity just because everybody could use some therapy. But uh, this is Joe, the bearded one, uh, Sue, man, the camera. You folks have a good evening and uh, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>